like, oh, just some syringes. Hmm. Hmm. Traffic stops can often lead to astonishing discoveries. Highway Patrol found 78 pounds of cocaine in their vehicle during a traffic stop. In today's video, we will take a closer look at three instances of what happens when traffic stops turn up millions of dollars worth of drugs. You won't believe what happens during the second stop. I can't tell, I've probably missed. Stephen Cox and Scott Green. On April 17th, 2019, an Arkansas state trooper working on Interstate 40 pulled over a white SUV for driving in the right lane and following too closely behind a black pickup. It was a fairly harmless traffic stop, but what the trooper went on to discover was far from harmless. How y'all doing? I'm a trooper short thing, please. Here's the stop's back. He's following that vehicle in front of that truck a little bit closer when he's exiting right there. Let's get the driver's license. Sure. Right come back with me. Have a seat real quick. Can I get you here in just a second? Okay. Yeah, just come on back with me. Come back yeah, with me. yeah, come back with me. In the car are two men, Stephen Mark Cox and Scott Samuel Green, both formally dressed up. They tell Trooper Short that they are fugitive recovery agents driving from California to Virginia in a hunt for a fugitive. The officer notices that both men are nervous and asks for Green to step out and walk towards the police vehicle. Okay, where is Green I have a pocket knife. It goes, it's in my inside right here. Okay, just, that's fine. Right, that's fine. Right. Yeah, you just have a seat in the front seat there. So where y'all heading to? Y'all you know, always travel with six ties. Well, I mean, yeah, we always dress nice. His brother used to own the business and uh, he passed away and he always like insisted that we were always, you know, dressed nicely. Like ready for court or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. What more business y'all? It's actually Bail, Bail Bond's business? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's the guy's name? Go ahead. Um, well, there's actually, um, there's two, two guys, but we're going after this guy, Derek Lumbo. Oh, bad guy. He's a piece of work, man. Really? Like a stalker, like just burning down like his ex-girlfriend's door, like all kinds of just bad shit. Wow. Green tells Officer Short the details of their assignment in Virginia. He also tells him why they always dress nice. However, he conveniently forgets of his previous drug charges, only telling Short about the time he got into trouble for joyriding. You ever been in trouble for anything or nothing like that? Or? Like 20 years ago, I was in trouble because um, my friend let me use a car and actually I got joyriding, but that was like 20 years ago. Was it? Okay. Yeah. 17 years ago. 23. Well, I got you out of California with me, right? It's on a white male. Last name is Green. First name is Scott. Middle name is Samuel, 790427, check. Green's tone is confident, and he answers everything promptly. But now the officer wants to check whether Green's story matches that of his partner. As the officer suspected, the two men do not have their stories in sync. While Green tells him all the details about the fugitive, Cox is mostly clueless. He also tells the officer of a minor infringement of the law in the past in the form of a DUI. However, the officer feels that the two men are much more dangerous and asks to check the trunk with the suspect's consent. What he finds next turns the whole thing on its head. I just put you guys in front up there. He's gonna let me search you guys' vehicle real quick. And I'll get you guys out in just a second, okay? Yeah, y'all can just hang right up there if you want. Yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll explain everything here in just a minute. What all's going on? So don't get in trouble with nothing, okay? okay. We just. I'm, just uh, I'm wondering because I was asleep and I was like, what, "What's yeah, you know?" Okay. Yeah, y'all just both extremely nervous. So. Yeah, keys. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you guys out here in just a second. In the trunk, the officer finds a duffel bag hidden inside the spare tire 
The bag contains more than 37 pounds of cocaine, a felony that can land the two suspects in jail for quite some time. Sit down. Sit down. You want no weapons on you? No, I mean, what's going on? Just stop going on for a Can you send us in headquarters my contact with Aisha? Where? Oh. Trying to fill you up here, don't you? Chains on your back. Thanks, sir. You want to send me? Here, come on. Yeah, you're the enforcer. Uh, come back here. Okay, we're in a round. Hey, you have the right to me, Sally. Hey, you have the right to have an attorney present. You have the right to have an attorney present. If you can't afford one, it won't be appointed to you at no cost, okay? You're not entitled to stop answering questions. Where are you asking? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Like a mix of I got you. Hey, man, I've been doing this a long time, okay? I mean, that's a what's, what's in there? What's that in there? I've been doing this no, a long I don't time. know. This ain't, my fir this ain't my first okay. rodeo. But I don't know. know. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you this. So this one hurt me. I don't know what that is, honestly. I don't. So it is a surprise when Green still asks why he is being read his Miranda rights and being put in jail. I stand up, man. You don't have any weapons on you, man? Nothing like that? Okay. Just don't put your hands together flat. Like that? Don't like this. Make it better over there. Oh, yeah. Why are you so nervous for, man? You've been extremely nervous. Hey, me, uh, you got the right to remain silent, man. Anything you say can will just get you into court law. You have a right to have an attorney present there. Okay. At any time, you want to start me asking questions. Okay. What's back there that I'm here? Do what? Yeah, there's something back here, man. I'm going to cut you in the front, okay? You seem to be free. I don't know. Yeah, you don't know what's back there? I'm going to cut Is it going to hurt? Is it anything bad? Just ask you that. Is it fentanyl? Something like that? It's going to hurt me. Stephen Cox of Beverly Hills was sentenced to 10 years in federal prison, followed by five years of supervised release. His partner, Scott Green of Los Angeles, was sentenced to three years and 10 months in federal prison, followed by three years of supervised release. The pair was stopped for a small infringement of the traffic rules. But sometimes these little stops can lead to massive discoveries like in the case of Herberto Ruiz. On September 28, 2017, an Arkansas State Police trooper conducted a traffic stop in Russellville when a silver Hyundai Santa Fe swerved across the center line on Interstate 40. The officer starts to explain the reason for the stop and asks for some paperwork. But the events that unfold start to raise his suspicions. Are you getting tired? No. Are you okay? I just burst the milk right now. Who you got with you? Three of you? You're just riding down the center line for a while there. I was just checking on you to see how you get sleepy or something. On the dotted white line. I just oh, check it on you. Let me good. check your license real quick, okay? Your paperwork. It's in my back. In the back of the okay. okay. Do you have the paperwork for the car? It's over in okay. You can come back here and get your license, okay? Do you guys have, have y'all's? Oh, yeah, I do. Switch right now. Okay. Who is the guy in the back? The, this guy right here. Who's that? Family member. That's all. Okay. That's family member. First time here. So you got, what hotel are y'all staying in up there? No idea. 
No you idea. just going to make the arrangements? Just as I go. Okay. How long are y'all staying up there? Uh, through Monday, I believe. Okay. That's a long trip, huh? Yeah, it's, it's a, a long, long trip. trip. No weapons no. on here or anything? No, no. Okay. Uh, why don't you stand right back here? I'll let you stand here with this. He's an officer also, okay? There are three people in the car, but the one driving is the only one without a license. He tells the officer that they are going to New York for a road trip from California, a 3,000 mile journey. And the driver is also not so confident of the supposed family member in the back. The officer then goes to Herbierto Ruiz to get his story and to check the paperwork for the rental car. Hi, sir. English? A little bit. A little bit. I don't live on. Okay. For Okay. Nice. Okay. For tiempo. The conversation unfolds in Spanish, and the officer finds out that Ruiz had rented the car two days earlier in California. His opinion of the length of their stay in New York and the reason for the trip also doesn't match with the driver. During all that, the officer continues to notice the anxiety on the faces of the suspects and asks Ruiz for permission to search the vehicle. Ruiz gives his consent, hoping that the officer will not find anything. However, the officer swiftly notices something odd and then finds out that this is far from a normal road trip. In the future, don't, don't be the only guy without a license and be driving the car. I know, so, I know. I'm sorry. Just stand up there with him, okay? You want to stand up? Do you mind stand up there with him? During the search, the officer noticed that the spare was a 15-inch tire, but the vehicle required 17-inch tires. Inside the spare tire, the officer found six packages wrapped in duct tape. The packages turned out to be over 15 pounds of fentanyl, which had a street value of over $6 million. 24, can you run down here? It's not an emergency, but I've got a load. I've got three people here, though, so I need somewhere to put them. I can Come on, I've got me and Hayden here. So he is ready to arrest all three suspects. But before doing that, he has another interaction with Ruiz, and it leads to another unusual discovery. Hey, no weapons? Old school phone there. He's uh, there. He fucked it up. Oh. Okay. I don't do right. Bottom of the Same kind of phone? Hey. What is it? What kind of phone is that? Ruiz appears to be carrying a burner phone. This could be key evidence when this case goes to trial. The suspect tries to play it off by saying that he keeps the phone to contact friends and women but it is quite obvious to the officer that he has it for more sinister reasons. After putting Ruse in handcuffs, the officer goes towards the other suspects and lets them know that they are under arrest. But the man driving the car has a hard time accepting the obvious. Y'all are under arrest. For what? For the bad stuff. 
Go back to the right. Walk him behind my car and just stand there. Seth will be here in a minute. Go back to the Yeah, it's bad. Go back to the Listen, you understand you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to remain silent. If you're not afford to hire an attorney, you can't afford any questions. No talk. You can decide any time to exercise your rights or answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand your rights? What happened? Do you understand your rights? Do you understand I'm what I just told you? I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. Well, I'm trying to get you unconfused. Do you understand what I just told you? You're right. No way. Well, what way? Do you, do you want me to repeat anything? I, I need to know what's going on. I would like to tell you that. I'm trying to get you through the first part of what I need to tell you, though. Do you understand what I just told you? Yes. Okay. The, the problem for you is uh -huh. that you're driving a car uh -huh. that has a whole bunch of drugs in the car. Now, the second part of that is, man, I would like to help you if you would like to help me. So, do you want to help? I have no idea those Yes, on. you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Would you like to help? Help how? What? Help by telling the truth, and maybe we get the bad guys on the other side of this instead of just you three. Y'all are what's called mules. You're taking the so drugs to I get I have no idea. Yes, I have no idea. Yes, you did. Anyways. They told me if I could drive, but that's what I do. Okay, how much were they paying you to drive? The road trip? I know. How much were they paying you for the road trip? It was more like a, a favor type oh, of deal. Well, how much were they paying you? They were not paying nothing. Be honest with me, man. They were not paying me nothing. Okay. Okay. You understand that a lot of prison time can come with having a lot of drugs in the car, right? You understand that? I don't even know if there's a joint in there. I have no idea what's going on. All three men were ultimately arrested and later admitted to knowingly trafficking the drug. They were charged with conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute fentanyl. However, there was more to come. In February 2018, an auto salvage business contacted law enforcement to report they had located a suspicious package in a vehicle they had purchased at auction from a car rental company. The vehicle was the same Hyundai Santa Fe from Ruiz's previous traffic stop, and it contained an additional five kilograms of fentanyl that had not been found in the initial search. A grand jury charged Ruiz and others in a superseding indictment to increase the amount of fentanyl involved in the offense. The vehicle's driver, Juan Avila Gutierrez, was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Mario Cruz, who sat in the back, was given more than three years, while Herbierto Ruiz was sentenced to 11 years in federal prison. All three suspects went behind bars for a long time. Sumter County, Florida's Elizabeth Espinoza met the same fate. On January 7, 2020, troopers on routine patrol saw a red 2016 Dodge Journey heading south on the I-75 and pulled the driver over because of an illegal tint. The driver was 27-year-old Elizabeth Espinoza, and she was caught with a much darker substance than her window tint. Driver, can you roll down your back window, please? Thank you. Hello, I'm Trooper Lewis. you have a license with you today? Okay. Is this your car? Yes. Okay. Any issues with your driver's license today? Well, yeah, other than being lost, um, suspended or anything else like that? Okay. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, let's do this. I'm going to give you a paper and a pen. Can you write down your information for me? Name, date, birth, social security number. What took you all the way out to Texas? Can you raise up your back window about halfway? Yeah. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not, but your back window is coming in at 2% light transmittance. As dark as you can have it on any of the windows behind the driver's seat is uh, 15. Well, we'll check this one in just a minute. So any number less than 15, the lower the number, the darker the tent, the higher the number, the lighter the tent. Can you raise up your front passenger window about the same? Good. Your front passenger window is coming in at 13, okay? As dark as you can have it on the front driver and passenger side windows in the state of Florida is 28. So this is 15% too dark here, okay? Yeah. Now I'm going to come around and check some numbers on your dash here. All right, well, I'll tell you what, Miss Espinosa, I'll give you a chance to stretch your legs here. Would you just grab your key step back here? I'm going to check your information. Okay. You want to turn it off? Yeah, just bring a key with you. That's fine. Yeah, switch it off, and that way you're not wasting gas. 
Gas is too expensive to, uh, if I just have you step over here on the grass, that way we're not too close to the roadway. And you said no issues with your license today, correct? Okay. I do have a picture out of you. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll look at it in just a minute. Okay. Um, when did you lose your license? You I know? lost it, uh, like two, three days ago. A couple of days ago. Was it while you were out in Texas? Yeah. All right. If I could have you wait right here, let me check your information, okay, ma'am? Thank you. She tells the officer that she lost her license four days ago in Texas and that she can show him a picture of it. The officer tells Elizabeth to wait as he goes back to his car. It looks like she may get off easy from this stop, however. Then another officer arrives along with a special agent who will put Elizabeth in deep trouble. So you lived in uh, Largo at one point? Yeah, I, okay. I moved out here. I'm going to give you a warning notice on the window tent, okay? Um, I'm going to issue a, a ticket for not having your driver's license with you. All you have to do is that within the next 30 days. Just get yourself a new copy of your driver's license. Take that um, copy of your driver's license up to the clerk's office here in Bushnell and um, present them with the new copy of your license and that ticket will be dismissed, okay? It'll just be we're in Bushnell or something. Okay. I'm going to give you all their all the information that you'll complete on here, okay? The officer who made the stop is about to let Elizabeth go and explains to her what she needs to do to get her license and windows in order. However, before he lets her go, he gets an important piece of information and asks the suspect about it. Hey, uh, Miss Espinosa, any reason that came on with search of your vehicle? Okay. Are you on the Florida Medical Marijuana Registry? I was working there, yes. You were, were working yeah, there? Yeah, I was working there. Um, I was working there. Okay. All right. Um, you're not uh, a, me a mar medical marijuana patient, are you? Okay. All right. He's not trained in the odor of marijuana anyway, but okay. this is something I have to ask you. Yeah. Uh, any hemp products in the vehicle today? No. Okay. All right. Well, trained police canine is alerted to your vehicle, so... Okay. We're going to need to check it just to make sure there's nothing in there that okay. shouldn't be, okay? okay. Um, you're not under arrest, okay. but you are going to be detained. Detained means that you're not free to go right now, okay? All right. Anything on you that might poke me, stick me, or hurt me in any way? No, can I make a copy of my right Yeah, give me just a minute. Let me have okay. you step up here, okay. Mrs. Pinoso. Go ahead and put your hands behind your head. Behind your head. Uh, I'm going to pat you down using the back of my hand camera here, okay? Can you spread your feet, please? Thank you. The K-9 drug-detecting dog alerted troopers of the presence of drugs inside the car. It gives officers probable cause to search the car. So they tell Elizabeth to wait in the back of the police van. But before the officers get their hands on any suspicious substance, Elizabeth incriminates herself on the phone. Hey, can you let Maria know to go for my kids? Um, I just got pulled over. I'm at the garage in Bush now, and um, I need I need to go pick up my kids. Espinoza utilized her cell phone to make several phone calls. During those calls, Espinoza was recorded stating in Spanish, "I'm on my way back. They're checking everything. They haven't found it yet, but they will." I'm not under arrest yet, but they're checking everything. I'm going to lose everything, everything. I'm not getting out of this one. They got the dog on me. They found it. In the meantime, the officers found a package within the dashboard in the back of the vehicle. It turned out to be 26 pounds of cocaine worth $1.2 million. Christ. <sighs> what the 
Espinoza was taken to Sumter County Jail on charges including possession of cocaine and trafficking cocaine. Court files show that her vehicle was targeted due to an ongoing drug investigation at the time, which would explain the sudden appearance of a canine at the stop. She was sentenced to 24 months in prison but got out earlier. However, she was back in court just a few months later on a domestic battery charge and continues to face those charges from her boyfriend. Comment your thoughts on these traffic stops in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, follow our channel for more deadly details.